I hate theater. Well, it's overrated, isn't it? You know what I do when I'm sitting in a darkened theater waiting for a show to begin? I pray. Oh, dear God, please let it be a good show. And let it be short. Oh, Lord in heaven, two hours is fine. Three hours is too much. And keep the actors out of the audience. God, I did not pay good money to have the fourth wall come crashing down around my ears. I just want a good story and a couple of songs that will take me away. I just want to be entertained. I mean, isn't that the point? Amen. <laughs> you know, there was a time when people sat in darkened theaters and thought to themselves, what have George and Ira Gershwin got for us tonight? Or can Cole Porter pull it off again? Can you believe it? Now it's please, Elton John, must we continue with this charade? It used to be sitting there in that darkened theater, you knew that when the show began, you'd be taken to another world, a world full of color and, and music and glamour, and you thought to yourself, my God, when are they going to bring up the lights? Oh, how things have changed. Hello, how are we today? I'm feeling a little blue myself. You know, a little anxious for no particular reason. A little sad that I should feel anxious at this age. A self-conscious anxiety resulting in non-specific sadness. A state that I call blue. Anyways, whenever I'm feeling this way, uh, blue, I like to listen to my music. So I was going through my records this morning. <laughs> yes, records and I was about to put on the soundtrack recording of Meredith Wilson's The Music Man. But then I said to myself, no, let's have a treat. Let's go back to the decadent world of the 1920s where the champagne flowed while the caviar chilled and the entire world was a party, for the wealthy anyways. So I dug about, and what did I find? But Gable and Science, a drowsy chaperone. <laughs> Remember? Music by Julie Gable, lyrics by Sidney Stein is a two-record set consisting of the original cast recording made in 1928, including Beatrice Stockwell as a chaperone. <laughs> oh, and this is, a full, this is a full 15 years before she became Dame Beatrice Stockwell. <laughs> Can you imagine? Let me, let me read to you what it says in the back. <laughs> it, it says, mix-ups, mayhem, and a gay wedding. Well, of course, the phrase gay wedding has a different meaning today, but <laughs> back then, it just meant fun. And that's what the show is, fun. So would you, would you indulge me? Uh, would you let me play the record for you now? I was hoping you'd say yes. Ooh, you hear that static? To me, it's the sound of a time machine starting up. All right, now let's visualize. Imagine, if you will, it is November 1928, and you're standing at the doors of the, of the Morosco Theater in New York. It is very cold. Remember it used to be cold in November? Not anymore. November's, November's, November's the new August. It's global warming. We're all doomed. Anyways, it is very cold, and a heavy gray sea is falling from the sky, but you don't care, because you're going to see a Broadway show. Listen. Oh, isn't this wonderful? It helps if you close your eyes. Overtures. Overtures are out of style now, I, I miss them. This is So's way of welcoming you. Hello, welcome, the meal will be served shortly, but in the meantime, would you like an appetizer? And that's what an overture is, a musical appetizer, a sort of poo-poo platter of tunes, if you will. Ooh, what's this? Something new. Sounds kind of like a dance tune, kind of rollicking, maybe involving pirates. Don't worry, there aren't any pirates. Oh, this is 
is it? The moment when the music starts to build, and you know you're only seconds away from being transported. Oh, this is it. The curtain's going up. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Mrs. Tottendale. Oh, I do love this dress so. It never goes out of style. It's a miracle, madam. My dress, my dress, my fancy dress. I don't know why I'm wearing it, I must confess. My dress, my dress, I love my dress. Would someone tell me why I put it on? Yes, yes. Your dress, your fancy dress, twas such a pleasure airing it, restitching and repairing it. God bless your dress, it's one fine dress, and I will tell you why you put it on. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime. Madam, you're the hostess in this happy wedding time. Wedding bells will ding, wedding bells will ding. Wedding bells will ding-a-ling and we will ding along. Wedding guests have come, wedding guests are here, wedding guests are at the door and soon they will appear. Hi Robert, the bridegroom, I'm here to marry Janet, that star of Baltic's folly to my love a lot. Hi George, that's George, his best man George, I'm honored to be doing what a best man ought. Ah, Mrs. Tottendale. Now don't worry, I have this whole wedding planned out. The key is organization, see? Each string represents a task yet to be completed. Pay the musician, yell at the florist, and book the minister. This wedding's gonna run like clockwork. Oh, is there going to be a wedding? <laughs> I'm Felgic. Producer, I lost my leading lady. I gotta stop this wedding or I'm not worth what. I pity, just pity. I came with Mr. Feltic. I'll be a leading lady if I get my shot. We're pastry chefs, we're pastry chefs. We cross our hearts, we're pastry chefs. No bakery, our bakery is what we've got. Aldalfo, my name it is Aldalfo. I am the king of romance, so I kiss a lot. You are the king of romance, so you kiss a lot. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime, wedding bells will celebrate a happy wedding time. Someone hasn't come, someone isn't here. Where is Janet Van der Rapp and when will she appear? It's Janet, it's Janet, it's Janet Vandegrad. Janet, Janet Vandegrad, here to marry Robert Martin, giving up a life of glamour to tie the knot. Am I late? I'm a chaperone, chaperone of Janet Vandegrad, made of honor, friend, and confidence. Oh, wedding, oh, wedding, how gay! Good thing I brought my own. Oh, wedding, oh, wedding, today! The champagne makes me drowsy! It's really happening, truly happening, almost happening. What is happening?
All the guests have arrived. We have a bride giving the stage love, her debonair bridegroom, a hairy producer, jovial gangsters, posing as pastry chefs, a flaky Corrine, a Latin Lothario, and an aviatrix, who we now call a lesbian. <laughs> and of course, my favorite character, the Jonesy Chaperone. What more can you need for an evening's entertainment? wonderful and we will ding along. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> All right, I'll lead you through the circuit as best I can. Don't worry, about it won't be hard to follow. We begin with a welcome from your love struck room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to thank you all for coming. Why, I must be some lucky fellow. Who would have thought that I, Robert Martin, would be marrying a glamorous showgirl? <laughs> And that glamorous showgirl would be willing to give up a successful career for me, Robert Martin. <laughs> now, if it weren't for prohibition, I'd say, let's raise a glass. Here, here. <laughs> to Miss Janet Van de Graaff, the most beautiful girl in the world. Absolutely not. <gasps> Excuse me? The groom mustn't see his bride on the day of his wedding. It's bad luck. Oh, I hope you heard that, because that's a plot. Basically, hang on for the ride. Breakfast will be served in the Arabian room. Let's go. Ooh. Say, it's a little early in the day to be drinking, isn't it? I don't understand the question. Look, you keep Janet away from Robert, you understand? You're the chaperone. That's your only job. Aye, aye, mon capitaine. Who's my little monkey? Yeah, I am. I'm your little monkey. <laughs> <laughs> So the bride and groom are whisked away, and we turn our attention to the B-plot, which involves the producer. Mr. Phelps is Getting married and leaving show business! Mr. Phelps is Don't she know I got obligations? Mr. Phelps is I can be a leading lady. You said it yourself. I'm useless in the chorus. Oh, Kitty, for the last time, you ain't got what it takes. But I've been taking lessons, singing, acting, ballet. Ballet? Yeah, I'm pretty good at it, too. Last week, I auditioned for Swanee Lake! Uh, a little annotation. Uh, Kitty and Feldzig were a couple in real life. Jack and Sadie Adler. It's a familiar comic construct. A stupid woman and her long-suffering companion. Well, she appears stupid, but in the end, she does something that's actually really clever and makes everyone wonder why this is all just an act. The irony here is that Sadie was actually quite stupid. <laughs> Jack apparently had to explain all the jokes to her. But still, she had a wonderful career on the stage. Back then, the theater was the only place where stupid people could earn a de decent living. This was for television, of course. Kitty, I don't have time for this. A pedophile, Mr. Feldzig? Not now. Well, perhaps a nice profiterole? Boys, I'm not hungry. Then boy, perhaps we can give you something else to chew on. Yeah, something that ain't food. What? Your confusion is to be expected. Although we stand here before you in the guise of innocent pastry chefs, we are also, and primarily, employees of a certain individual. A certain individual? A certain individual. Who happens to be the single largest investor of Feltzig Follies. He has sent us here as pastry chefs to express his concerns about Van de Graaff's impending nuptials. Specifically, that if she gets married and leaves the show, then, then there, there ain't, ain't no, no show. show. Say, don't I know you? No, you don't. Have you ever spent any time in Toledo? Have you ever spent any time in a coma? Um, no, but I have a cousin in Seattle. Kitty! Boys, you tell your boss this wedding's never gonna happen. You have my word. Oh, we'll take your word all right. But to go back on that word would be a recipe for disaster. Now, I hope we made ourselves perfectly eclair. <laughs> one, one cannoli hope. You biscotta be kidding me. A trifle much? Don't tie with me. All right. You can drop the pastry chef routine. Alas, we can ash. We're on the lamb. <laughs> Lamb's an entree, you macaroon. <laughs> the gangsters were played by an interchangeable vaudeville trio, the Short Brothers, John, Paul, and Peter Short. 
they were originally born, Abram Shlomo and Mendel Moslotkovich, but were renamed at Ellis Island by a board immigration official. They're an early example of the typical Broadway gangster, full of wordplay and stylized movements. Not very intimidating, unless you find dancers intimidating, which I do, for reasons that would not be appropriate to the situation. We'll leave the matter in your hands, Mr. Feldzik. In the meantime, feel free to browse the dessert carousel. Try the Toledo surprise. It's, it's to, to die, die for. for. Very perceptive. Now go powder your face. I gotta stop this wedding. But how? Oh, Lord in heaven, how? How? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always thought the moment was a little overplayed. So with the story of well on sway, let's head to the groom's room. Hey there, handsome. Show me those pearly whites. The groom was played by the dashing Percy Hyman. He was the all bright toothpaste man. His fabulous smile adorned every tube. Uh, all bright was hugely popular in the early 20s because it contained cocaine. <laughs> no, it's true. If you looked at the label, it was a fifth ingredient down right after sugar. Anyways, it was a long time before it became a huge matinee idol. Now, don't you worry, it's perfectly normal for a groom to be nervous on his wedding day. It is, of course! Oh, I love Percy Hyman. Now, some people say he was a bad actor, but to those people say, shut up! Hey there, Mr. Mirror Man, shaking and a quaking. Trembling like them Frady cats do Something big be bothering You and I know just what it is Cold feet, cold feet Brother, you got cold feet You can make them cold feet hot With a little rhythm Young feet, old feet can't be on control beats. Rhythm make them cold beats trot down the aisle. Frosty arches, they can learn to swing. Icy toes can jive. Wedding marches, played in ragtime swing. Make frigid souls come alive. And you take that dive. Cold feet, small feet, turn them into bold feet. Rhythm, make them cold feet. Hot. You don't say. Well, why don't you just slime back into your mud hole, you backstabbing worm? Well, now I've got to find another minister. Say, what are you up to? Now I'm singing a song an old Negro taught me. A Dixie remedy for wedding day jitters. You think you've got the jitters? You've got the easy part. I still gotta get the rice boutonnieres and a minister. I have the weight of the wedding on my shoulders. George, it sounds like you've got cold feet. What do I got? Cold feet. What do I want? Bold feet. What do I do? Scold feet? No. Cold feet time. Uh, George, look, you're dancing. I am? I am.
A five, six, seven, eight. Hot. Percy Hyman was such a wonderful performer. I like to think of him panting and sweating after a long dance routine like that. He's still alive, you know. Yeah, I saw him on the news recently celebrating his 100th birthday. To say that the passing years have taken their toll on him will be a grotesque understatement. They wheeled him out and he had that wide-eyed look of pain and confusion that God reserves for the very, very old on their birthdays. You know, the one that goes, who are you? Who am I? Why is that thing on fire? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Anyways. All right, all right, that's enough of that. Dancing around like a fool. Oh, I'm sorry, George, I was just trying to calm my nerves. It is my wedding day, after all. Well, you could have snapped an ankle. Top dancing is too dangerous. Why don't you go out for a skate instead? <laughs> That's what I do when I want to blow off some steam. George, you think of everything. <laughs> Wait a minute. What was I thinking? Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going out like that, my friend. You might see Janet. Here, put on this blindfold. <laughs> oh, George, what would I do without you? <laughs> Just looking out for you, my boy. And remember, no more tap dancing. Wedding bells will ring. Oh, oh. Wedding bells will chime. Sorry, sorry, it doesn't occasionally it rings. Wedding bells will celebrate. It'll stop soon, just ignore it. <laughs> what? What do you want? Well, that's it. The moment's ruined. Thank you. Thank you, life. It's like a cell phone going off at the theater. God, I hate that. Oh, hi. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm just in the theater ruining the moment. <laughs> How about you? Oh, uh, well, I couldn't get out tonight, so I thought I'd just ruin the moment by proxy. <laughs> Sorry, just shake that off. Let's return our minds to 1928. They didn't have cell phones in 1928, but I'm sure they had something else for the ruining of moments. Bugles or something. Happy wedding time. So with the story well on its way, let's see the bride, the glorious Janet Vandegraaff, Entertaining questions from reporters as she lounges by the pool. Miss Vandegraaff, is it true you're giving up a successful career to marry a man you hardly know? Yes. Robert and I met on the Lido deck of the Ile de France. He amused me with stories of his father's oil interests. We spooned, briefly. And then he proposed. So you won't be returning to the stage ever? I shan't. You shan't? I shan't. Can we call you on that? Of course. One more question. Yes? Why in the world would anyone put olives in a Gibson? Oh. I got a question. How can you give up the full lights when you know very well you got grease paint in your veins? Victor, please. Oh, Janet, I'm begging you. Dump the mug. Stay with the Follies. I'll give you anything you want. Oh, 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 fine. I'll put your name above mine on the marquee. <gasps> oh, Victor, if you think it's about vanity, you couldn't be more wrong. I don't want to show off no more. I don't want to sing tunes no more. I don't want to ride moons no more. I don't want to.
wanna show off. I don't wanna wear this no more. Play the saucy Swiss Miss no more. Blow my signature no more. I don't wanna show off. Janet, please! Don't try to control me. I've made up my mind. And that's it. I quit. continue a life on the stage. Can't you see it's killing us all? Don't worry, boys. This, is, this isn't over yet. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't do an encore. <laughs>
That was Jane Roberts as a bride. She was the Oops Girl. Remember? Well, surely you remember the Oops Girl. Don't you people read? The Oops Girl was billed as a girl whose sexual energy was so great, it caused men around her to have accidents, like spill the drinks and crash the cars into trees. And, and, and then she'd go, oops. <laughs> well, I'm not really doing it justice, but trust me, people ate it up. She made a whole series of films, uh, Oops, The Oops Girl, Oops Girl at Sea, and Oops Girl Come Home, which won an Oscar for special effects. Okay, begging and groveling didn't work. On a plan B. And for that, I'm gonna need an accomplice. Someone gullible with loose morals. I'm gonna need a, uh, what do you call him? A European. La 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 ah! ah! In walks Aldolfo, self-proclaimed ladies' man. Aldolfo is played by former silent film star and world-class alcoholic Roman Bartelli. He was the one who later drank himself to death in his chateau in Nice. Remember? It was five days before they found the body, and by that point, he'd already been partially consumed by his poodles. Well, only partially consumed. Excuse me, I don't believe we've met. I am Aldolfo. You are Aldolfo. Yes, I am. Aldalfo. Not the Aldalfo. Yes, I am. Aldalfo. <laughs> Funny, you don't look like a scoundrel. Yes, I... What? Why, just now, I overheard the groom saying that Aldalfo is a scoundrel. I just heard him say that. Aldalfo a scoundrel? Those very words. Aldalfo is a scoundrel? It's like I'm hearing it again. This is outrageous. He is saying this to people? Two beautiful ladies with breasts for making love. <laughs> Why, I must, I must. You must, you must take matters into your own hands. Yes. I must take this groom into my hands and kill him. Yeah, no. Don't kill him. Just hurt him bad enough so he can't get married. Show me to this groom. Wait. What? What kind of man is this groom? Is he a big man? Well. A burly fellow? Well, he's big on the outside. No, 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 no. Aldalfo will not fight big men. Small, pale, wheezy little dwarfs like people so Aldalfo can punt far away. <laughs> but no big men. So you're a lover, not a fighter. Yes. Aldalfo is a lover of beautiful ladies. Some say I am the king of romance. Well, you know what they say. The best way to get back at a man is through his door. No. The best way to get back at a man is through his... Window! No! Revenge back at a man through his... Through his... Through his... Ah! There is no other ways. I'm not thunderclouds coming on chimney. Through his woman! Ah, through his woman. Yes, Aldolfo. You must seduce his woman. His woman. His bride. Aldolfo will make love to bride. That will prove to people Aldolfo is no scoundrel. Show me to this bride. Wait, what? What kind of woman is this bride? Is she a big woman? No. A burly woman? No, she's uh, the cat's pajamas. Pajamas? She's a looker. An uh, attractive woman? Oh, show me to the cat in pajamas. Aldalfo will make her purr. I stop purr it! Like a cat in pajamas! I... <laughs> Roman Bartelli chewing up the scenery. You certainly could not get away with a performance like that nowadays. Mature, contemporary audiences are too sophisticated for broad racial stereotypes. So he banished them to Disney. Let the kids sort it out. <laughs> Underling. Yes, madam. The pastry chefs have been kind enough to provide the liquor for the party. But remember, Underling. We have to be discreet. Yes, madam. It is the prohibition, after all. I'm aware of that, madam. We'll have to use code words. For instance, if someone asks for a glass of ice water, it means they want a glass of vodka. Have you got that? Yes, madam. Are you sure? Maybe you should write it down. I understand, madam. 
A glass of ice water is a glass of vodka. What's a glass of ice water? Vodka. Ice water? Vodka. Ice? Vodka! Well, you see, that's settled then. One last thing to do. Wonderling, why do I please have a glass of ice water? I found our meeting with the pastry chefs rather trying, and I would enjoy a glass of refreshing ice water. Your ice water, madam. Oh, uh, yeah. I hate this scene. Well, now I do need a glass of ice water. A glass of ice water, madam? Yes, ice water. Are you going deaf? Would that I were. You, you can see where this is going, can't you? It's, it's really just a series of spit takes. Your ice water, madam. <laughs> That's for vodka, you poop! You know, in some ways, the drowsy chaperone was quite progressive. A uh, black actress playing aviatrix, for instance. Your ice water, madam. <laughs> That's for vodka, you poop! Yes, some elements were progressive. Others were stale in 1928. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna skip ahead. <laughs> that was... That... That... Poop! Where do you think you're going? To find some lime juice, madam. Lime juice? For heaven's sakes, why? I'm going to wring out my eyebrows and make myself a gimlet. <laughs> now, you're probably asking yourself, what was that routine doing in the show? Well, it's simple. There's a song coming up, and they needed something to allow for a set change. It's mechanics. It's like pornography. Okay, let me explain to you what I meant by that. <laughs> In pornography, the story is simplistic. How do I pay for this pizza, being the classic example. My, my point is, <laughs> as in a musical, the story only exists to connect the longer, more engaging production numbers. What? Well, what kind of society do we live in where we can't discuss the similarities between pornography and musical theater? <laughs> Mrs. Robert Martin. Oh, my head is spinning. Yes, life is a bad whirlwind. Oh, this is a really interesting scene. This is the only point in the play where Jane Roberts and Beatrice Stockwell are alone together on stage. Jane Roberts was an emerging star, but Beatrice Stockwell was already well established and a force to contend with. Oh, I'm so full of apprehension, but I suppose that's normal considering the circumstances. Have you ever been married, Chaperone? No, I drink for pleasure, not out of necessity. Your ice water, madam. I'm afraid we're fresh out of olives. Have you ever been married, Underling? Heavens no, madam. If I'm going to serve a woman, I prefer to be paid for my efforts. Too. I know it seems crazy to give up a successful career to marry a man I hardly know, but somehow, for some reason, when I look into his eyes, his big monkey eyes, ah, oh, gee, I get all woozy, and that's love, isn't it? Not necessarily. The wooziness could be caused by any number of things. I mean, I'm woozy right now, and I'm certainly not in love. Now, Beatrice Stockwell is famous for her rousing anthems. She entertained and inspired the troops of every major world conflict, up to and including the Falklands War. Well, of course, by that time, she was in her late 80s, and her anthem did so much as rouse as stupefy. Still, she demanded that a rousing anthem be included in every show she ever did, even if it wasn't appropriate. But you couldn't say no to her. Now that's star power. Really, you're not being the least bit helpful. Couldn't you at least allay my fears with a few choice words of inspiration? Oh, inspiration, dear. That's really not my forte. Yes, but if you... As we stumble along 
on life's funny journey as we stumble along into the blue. We look here and we look there, seeking answers anywhere, never sure of where to turn or what to do. Still we bumble our way through life's crazy labyrinth, barely knowing left from right, nor right from wrong. And the best that we can do is hope a bluebird will sing his song as we stumble along. nice chaperone, but I still don't see how it pertains to my situation. Let me explain. Oh, that's really not necessary. I suppose I was looking for a sympathetic... It's a dismal little world in which we live. It can bore you till you've nothing left to give. Seven overrated wonders, seven underwhelming seas, six excruciating continents, Antarctica. Oh, please. Antarctica, oh, please. Still, you mustn't let it lick you. This planet, oh, so bland. Keep your eyeball on the highball in your hand. As we stumble along, cross the life's crowded dance floors. We push and we shove, we live and we learn, and when we finally leave the bar, and we see that morning star, we pull our bootstraps up and homeward turn, then we sings a rousing anthem about alcoholism. And that's the thing I like about her. She just does her own thing when she wants, regardless of the needs or concerns of other people. My mother was like that. That was quite inspiring, Chaperone. One might even say rousing. But I'm still conflicted. Oh, please, just tell me, is Robert the man for me? Oh, my dear, that is something you'll have to decide for yourself. But I just don't know if he loves me. Why don't you ask him? Why don't you say, Roger, do you love me? It's Robert, and I'm not supposed to see him. In fact, you're supposed to keep him away from me. 
You're right, and I take the responsibility very seriously. However, this moment I'm feeling terribly, terribly drowsy. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to have a lady down. Now, whatever you do, do not go wandering through the garden seeking out your fiancé to ask him the question upon which your future happiness depends. Oh, thank you, chaperone. I just have to know if he loves me. a skinny little fool. Still, I envy her. When will love come crashing through my door? Here comes Aldolfo, come to seduce the bride. I am Aldolfo. Try to think of the poodles while listening to this part. I am Aldolfo, and you are bride. No, I am not. What? But this is bridal suite, and you were the only one here. Therefore, you must be bride. Interesting argument, but I'm afraid you are a moron. What? Me? No bride. Perhaps I could take a message. Mm, just very good. Dear Andegraf bride, I must make love to you and transport you to a place of ecstasy. <laughs> Sooner is better. Signed, Andalpo, King of Romance. Well, you've seen through my little ruse. You found me out. So you are the bride. Apparently, yes. Take me, Aldolface. <gasps> no, 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 no. Not Aldolface. Aldolfo. You must learn to say the right name for when we are making love and you are screaming. You must say the right name or to spoil everything. How can I make you remember? Sure that you have heard the name Aldolfo, a ladies' man who wins a claim Aldolfo. Well, lovely miss, I am that same Aldolfo. I introduce myself. I am Aldolfo. Shall we? Eh, not so fast. So just in case you didn't hear Aldolfo, I'll try to make it very clear, Aldolfo. A lovely ladies always cheer Aldolfo When I repeat myself, I am Aldolfo Understood? I can sing it high Aldolfo I can sing it low Aldolfo I can sing it very fast Aldolfo I can sing it very Slowly. I do it now, but it would take hours. <laughs> now let me see if you can remember my name. I'll give it a shot. So who's the fella that you see? Aldolfo. And how should you refer to me? Aldolfo. And who is it I'll always be? Aldolfo. Now sing it proudly. War all done. Now, let me spell it out for you. For all you lovely ladies that are here, because maybe you are hard of hearing or something. I don't know. It goes. Oh.
was my mother's favorite number in the show. I always thought it was her secret fantasy to be swept off her feet by a Latin lover. And I mean a real Latin lover, not a buffoon. <laughs> but that's what musicals are all about, really. Romantic fantasy. Falling in love at the drop of a hat. Spontaneous tangoing. Suddenly finding yourself in an insanely romantic setting. I'm an accident waiting to happen. La di da di da 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 da. La di da di da da. Oh, don't worry, madam. I'm getting married today, so I have to wear a blindfold. A blindfold? I'm sorry. Who am I speaking to, anyhow? Why, it's me. I mean. Me, 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 me from France. This thing couldn't be more ridiculous. So you're marrying Janet Vandegraaff, no? Oui. <laughs> I hear she's very beautiful. Oh, oui. And glamorous. Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> Is it true she has an exceptionally broad range and excels at playing both comedic and dramatic roles? Say, I'm having trouble placing your accent. Uh, what part of France are you from? Oh, the middle part, where they make the toast. Mm. <laughs> so, you were turned out to, how do you say in English, fiancé? That's right. <laughs> well, tell me, when was the moment you knew she was the only one for you? Well, it's a funny story, actually. Uh, we were standing on the Lido deck of the Ile de France. Yes. I was amusing her with stories of my father's oil interests. And then what happened? Then I looked into her eyes, her big, glamorous eyes, and I fell all woozy. And then you fell? Oh, and then you fell. Uh, yes, right on my keister. And I said, well, I guess I don't have my sea legs yet. But we haven't left the dock. That's what she said. And that's when I knew it must be love. And then you said... And then I said... There was a time I could stomp on a dime For parents was one of my talents But since you've been around I can't hold my ground I'm consistently losing my balance I'm an accident waiting to happen I'm a mishap about to ensue I'm the toy on the stair The three-legged chair the hen that's been caught by a shoe When my two lovesick arms started flapping There was nothing my ankles could do I'm an accident waiting to happen So how be I happy to you? And then what happened? Well, and then she joined in <laughs> Sweet and they fall at my feet. My heart doesn't beat any faster. But when you lose control, it touches my soul. So I'm bracing myself for disaster. You're an accident waiting to happen. That's right. A catastrophe destined to be. Well, that's me. I'm the rags in the cellar. A broken umbrella. A branching loose from a tree I can see myself jumping and clapping For a man who lives dangerously You're I'm an accident waiting to happen So hurry and happen to me And then what happened? Well, and then we kissed I'm an accident waiting to happen So hurry and happen to me Wait a minute! You kissed a strange French girl on your wedding day! Oh no! What have I done? Oh, wait! Wait! Well, it seems that the blindfold and the fake French accent have led to a terrible misunderstanding. Will it all work out in the end? Of course it will. It's a musical. Everything always works out in musicals. In the real world, nothing ever works out, and the only people who break out in the song are 
helps you to range. Mr. Feldsick. Where is that philandering foreigner? Mr. Feldsick. How long does it take to seduce one bride? Mr. Feldsick, you don't need Janet no more. Oh, kitty, not now. I've been working on a new mind reading app. Presenting Kitty the Incomprehensible! Now, think of something. Oh, I'm thinking of something, all right. Mm, wait! I'm getting it. Pick up some milk and a loaf of rye bread and don't forget to shave your legs. You're reading your own mind, you idiot! No wonder it was so easy. Mr. Feltzig. It would seem that the wedding is proceeding according to schedule. Now it's time to receive your just desserts. What do you say, partners? Should we whip up something special, Mr. Feltzig? Yeah. How about a Toledo surprise? An inspired choice? A Toledo surprise? I've never heard of that. No, you haven't. Those people who have heard of it are generally never heard from again. We'll share the recipe with you. First, you chop the nuts. Then you pound the dough. Then you bake it up nice and slow. And then you got your Toledo... Toledo surprise! Could you run that by me again? It's a very simple recipe, Mr. Feldsick. First, you chop the nuts. Then you pound the dough. Then you bake it up nice and slow. And, and then, then you, you got, got your Toledo... Toledo surprise! Say, why don't we give them a little taste? All, All right. right! Hold it! What style? What grace? What rhythm? Open your fist. Now shake them. Now give me that recipe one more time. Da 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 da. Chop the nuts, pound the dough, bake it up nice and slow. Then you got your Toledo. Toledo surprise. Pit the peach, peel the skin, mush it up, throw it in. That's a tasty Toledo. Toledo surprise. First you beat it up. When you heat it up, if it tries to rise, don't let it, it's a snap. Try it, folks. Whip your whites, split your yolks, and you got a Splendido. Toledo surprise. You boys are natural. Honest? Keep it up. I'll go work on the contract. Hey! A five, six, seven, eight. Kitty, I'm developing a new act. Toledo surprise. You mean you're putting gangsters in the show when you won't put me in it? That I'm not even in the union! Shh, you got it all wrong. Your new act, it's for you, Kitty. And these boys are your backup dancers. Backup dancers? Holy cat! What that hot Toledo does? Announcement! Wedding is off! What? For the love of God, why? Aldalfo has made love to the bride. Oh. oh, that is not the bride, you idiot! That is the chaperone! What? The wedding is on! The wedding is on! What? Robert kissed a French girl! Her name is Mimi! She's very beautiful! Oh, I couldn't help it, Janet! She was just like you! Only French. <laughs> Sweet mother of pearl! Oh, Underling? Yes, madam. What is all the commotion about? The wedding, madam. Oh, is there going to be a wedding? <laughs> Not anymore. Oh, what a tragedy. What a wonderful, wonderful tragedy. Clear the floor, boys. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> First you beat it up. Then you sweet it up. When you heat it up. If it tries to rise, don't let it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Toledo surprise. Surprise? Wait until it's ready. Surprise? Wait until it's ready. Surprise? Wait until it's ready. Now it's looking ready. Surprise? You got it. Surprise!
that, the curtain closes, and it's time for intermission. I don't like intermissions. They, they ruin the magic. They yank you back into reality. One moment you're in this world of music and romance, and then bang, you're surrounded by tourists. Crinkly candy wrappers, nattering about the lack of women's restrooms. That's cruel. Harbor. Yeah, I've eaten small meals all day long or get jittery. You like you wouldn't like the alternative, but believe you me, it's better. Believe you me. <sighs> I remember my wedding day. I didn't eat breakfast in the ceremony. It wasn't until four in the afternoon. <laughs> I do, I do. Uh, are you surprised I was married? Well, there you go. You shouldn't go making assumptions about people. I'm a very complicated person. Act two of the Drowsy Chaperone begins with this. A haunting lens from a very depressed bride. She sings it, bathed in the pale blue lights of a sympathetic moon, which is ridiculous because it's the middle of the day. Oh, now, while I listen to this, just ignore the lyrics. I know it will be difficult, but block them out. They're not the best. But the tune is beautiful and truly communicates the bright state of mind. Just ignore the lyrics.
save that pedestal for you. I'm just gonna pour myself a brandy. Come, my little monkey. Come, my little monkey. Do. The tune is so simple, it just floats in the air. And to be honest, I always get a little bit misty when I picture that jacket on that pedestal. It's long sleeves dangling on the floor. Oh, monkey, monkey, monkey. Love that number, it has a little bit of everything. A little Bubsy Berkeley, a little Jane Goodall. That's another thing I love about musicals in general. When it occurs in crisis, they sing and they dance, which is so much more interesting than just whining about it. <laughs> but that's the glory with musical theater. It, it, it does what it needs to do. Oh, oh, you see, this is what I'm talking about. This is life. You manage to be happy for five seconds and something starts ringing. Uh, <laughs> Shall I have the pews removed now, or would you prefer I wait until morning? Okay, I'm gonna stop the record here because I don't want the number to be ruined by the ringing phone. 
Here, we have two vaudeville performers who have slipped through the cracks of time. They are Noel Fitzpatrick and Ukulele Lil. I don't know anything about them. I suppose Ukulele Lil played ukulele, although she doesn't in this show. Well, I actually tried to find out more about him. Uh, I went through my books. I even tried the internet. But all my searches ended up with uh, Tiny Tim's autopsy photographs. Anyways, they're both charming. Why would you have the pews removed? The bride has called off the wedding, madam. Oh, underling, never listen to a bride on her wedding day. Love is a very complex emotion, underling. Yes, madam. Why, you could be very close to someone one minute. And the next minute, why, you just want to strangle them? Do you understand? I'm familiar with the urge to strangle... <laughs> yes. You see, that's just the nature of love. Love makes lovers worry, love makes lovers fret. But here's a fact on which we can depend. Just like long ago when Romeo loved Juliet. Always love the Indian. But Madam Romeo and Juliet was a tragedy. Oh, I never read reviews. Love can cause a quarrel, love can cause a din. But love has always been a trusty friend. Twas a happy fate for Hank the Eight and Anne Boleyn. Love has always loved the Indian. But Madam Anne Boleyn lost her head. Yes, she was in love. Love was good. Eve and Adam. Here we go again. And Samson and Delilah too. Good grief. May I pose a question, madam? Yes, of course. Why does nothing I say to you ever get through? Don't mind if I do. to be quite taxing. Excuse me, madam, while I pour myself a glass of ice water. Love sneaks up behind you, love drops from above, but love would never consciously offend. Love has certainly been kind to me and my true love. Love is always lovely in the end. But your late husband was a brute. I don't mean him, you silly coot. <laughs> love is always so lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Love is always lovely in the end. Love is always lovely in the end. Yes, that was charming. But to be frank, on some level, that number pisses me off. Now, I'm going to say something here, and yes, I have been drinking. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say that love is not always lovely in the end. Often, in the end, there are lawyers. <laughs> and another thing, and another thing, surely someone was aware of the awkward sexual connotations of that title. Love is always lovely in the end. I mean, it's just, is it just me? <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying here is that number is naive, and irresponsibly so. <sighs> Sorry, I just thought, ne thought, thought that needed to be said for the benefit of the young people. I won't interrupt anymore. Oh, there's a moment coming up that I've become obsessed with. Chaperone, I'm in a terrible state. You certainly are. You can't go to the wedding looking like that. Oh, you poor dear. Haven't you heard? The wedding's been called off. Not your wedding, mine. Oh, that reminds me. Might I borrow your veil? You're getting married, but to whom? Live. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah. Oh, beautiful lady with muffled expression. You're marrying. Oh, 
Dolfo? I know it's surprising, but when I look into his eyes, his big clumsy eyes, I get all drowsy. And that's love, isn't it? Yes, dear, that is love. Help me. <laughs> there you are. All right, I'm gonna put my cards on the table. I got a weak card. Can't take the pressure. If this goes on any longer, the old ticker's gonna give out. Please, tell me. Is there going to be a wedding or not? Yes. Oh, thank the good Lord in heaven. Aldolfo and Chaperon are getting married. What? There you are. I have wonderful news. There's going to be a wedding. We know. You do? Yes, we just heard. But who told you? But who... I didn't. But how did you know? What difference does it make? Mrs. Tottendale and I are to be married in the garden at 7.30 this evening. What? What? Oh, yes. Congratulations. To everyone. Say, what kind of cockamamie wedding is this? Everybody's getting married except the bride and groom. Oh, there you are, Janet. I've been looking everywhere for you. Hello, Mr. Martin. Please don't be that way. But can't you find it in your heart to marry me? Janet, it is our wedding day. George has gone through all this trouble and... Well, I do love you more than I can say. But you kissed another woman. Uh, yes, and I just can't understand it. Uh, I know this might sound ridiculous, but when I was kissing that French girl, well, it was just like kissing you. Oh, Robert, you were kissing me. You mean, you're Mimi? <laughs> wow, that French accent was remarkably accurate. <laughs> Why, thank you. I developed it when I played the role of Margot and hauled that baguette. Sir, before you do anything, think about this. No matter how well you play the part of happy wife, you'll never, ever get a staying ovation. Oh, oh I just don't know. Oh, I'm so confused. Oh, Chaperon, please, I beg you just this once, give me some advice that's coherent and appropriate to this situation. Should I marry Robert? Oh, and this is it, the moment I was talking to you about. Not only the culmination of the plot, but a moment that's brought me back to this record again and again. Here it is. Well, my advice to you is... This is it, listen, listen. While you can. Did you catch that? You can't quite make out what she says because someone drops the cane. I'll play it for you again. <laughs> while you can. Is she saying live while you can or leave while you can? While you can. I mean, it's Beatrice Stockwell, so it might just be a cynical quip. But that's exactly what you're thinking when you're standing at the altar, isn't it? Live or leave. And you have to live, right? Because you do love her in some way. Well, it's not an exact science, and it doesn't come out of the sky and point the one you're supposed to be with. So you say to someone, you say, I love you, but basically, you phrase it as a question. Oh, but then she accepts this fact, and next thing you know, she's standing there in a $3,000 dress with tears in her eyes, and her nephew made the hoopa. so what do you do? Do you say, I was joking, I was kidding. No, you can't. You live, right? You choose to live. And for the next couple of months, you stare at this alien life form in bed beside you thinking, who are you? Who are you? One day you just say it out loud, and oh, now it's trial separation and couples counseling. Now your conversations about her eating disorder or your, your Zoloft addiction, and you're constantly redefining and reevaluating, revisiting love before you finally lose a deposit on the house. And the whole relationship ends on a particularly ugly note with the only copy of Gypsy flying through the air and smashing against the living room wall. But still, in a larger sense, in a broader sense. It's better to have lived than to have left. Right? While you can. Oh, uh, you have no idea how many times I've listened to that. Oh, Chaperone, you certainly do have a way with words. Robert, my answer is yes, I will marry you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, Mr. Feldig, it seems like the wedding is a done deal. You're in trouble now. And there's muffin you can do about it. But there is. I found a, a replacement, a new leading lady, presenting Kitty the Incredible. Okay, Kitty, now concentrate and show these boys how you can read my mind, okay? My mind. Will you marry me? Holy cats, Mr. Phelps, yes, yes! Is 
Isn't she amazing? Well, what are you waiting for? You ladies go put on your frillies. We'll all get married in one big club. That's how they do it in Utah. Oh. Well, George, I don't know how you managed to pull it off. Four weddings in one day. Well, I guess you're everybody's best man now. I am? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Hip, hip, hooray! He's George. George. That's George, the best man, George. I'm on it. Hey. What a best man, Ut. He's basking in the glory of a fight well fought. Wedding bells will ring. Wedding bells will chime. Wedding bells will celebrate a happy wedding time. Stay calm. This happens occasionally. It's a horrible old department with terrible wiring. Uh, just concentrate. Just keep the show alive in your mind. Don't talk to anyone. Don't let yourself be distracted. I'll go find a fuse box. Uh, uh. Everyone be quiet. It's the super! Oh, God. <laughs> uh. Hi. Hello. 
Your lights are out. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we had to shut the power off because we're replacing the breaker panels in the basement. Yes. Yeah, so we replaced them, and then when we turned the power off, all the breakers in the apartments tripped. Yes. That's what happens. It's normal. Yes. So I got to reset your breakers. Now? It'll only take a second. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, because I, I tried calling you earlier, but there was no answer. <laughs> yeah, I've been having a problem with the phone. <laughs> Here we go. What was that? Oh, it was music. Well, what kind of music was that? Oh, it was a show, you know, you know, musical. You, you like musicals? No. I love musicals. I go with my wife all the time. It's amazing what they can do on stage nowadays. You see Miss Saigon? I heard they landed a helicopter on stage in that one. Yeah, I've seen them all. I've seen uh, Cats, Les Mis, uh -huh. uh, Saturday Night Fever. I like the movie better, though. Really? Well, goodbye. <laughs> well, that's it. Moments ruined. One note away from the end of the show and the mood is broken. I should just start the record from the beginning. No, I can't do that, can I? Ugh, it's so frustrating. You have to understand, I love this show so much and I've never even seen it. My mother gave me the record. This is just before my father left us. Oh, he didn't leave because of the record? Although I'm sure it didn't help matters. Look. I know it's not a perfect show. The spick tape scene is lame and the monkey motif is labored. But none of that matters. It does what a show is supposed to do. It takes you to another world. It gives you a little tune to carry within your head. It gives you something to help you escape the dreary horrors of the real world. A little something for when you're feeling blue. As we stumble along, on life's funny journey as we stumble along into the blue we look here and we look there seeking answers anywhere never sure of where to turn or what to I'm do I'm in accident waiting to have it Bumble our way through life's crazy labyrinth. 